Hi there and welcome to this video about solid thinking compose. Today we're gonna take a look at Laplace equation, which is the ninth step of the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes. Let's get into it. So the Laplace in two dimension um, is characterized by this equation. So the second order derivative of p in respect to x and plus the sum uh, plus the second order derivative in uh, respect to y equal up to zero. Um, this Laplace equation can be also found in literature, which is often denoted as the squared Nabla operation, uh, operator or the Laplace operator. And it says right here, it's a sum of all second order derivatives. And there's a lot of different physics which can be modeled with this little equation. So for example, the heat equation. Heat equation is characterized as the change in temperature over time uh, minus alpha, which is the heating heating coefficient. Heat, heat, wait a second, what's the English word? Um, doesn't say here. Ah, thermal diffusivity. Yeah, so the thermal diffusivity times the sum of all second order derivatives in the spatial uh, coordinate directions. And as you see, when this gets zero, um, this also has to be zero because uh, the thermal diffusivity is a positive constant. And this is just a Laplace equation. So the Laplace equation can be interpreted as the state where no change in temperature over time is happening anymore. All right, let's get back into the equation right over here. So we have another physics in here because it's diffusion and a diffusion term you you want to discretize with central differences, not with forward difference as we did with all the wave propagating stuff. So we use central differences and as you see here um, there's no n plus one. So not the usual stuff in this case but we we could solve this equation forever and ever and ever, um, but we have some breaking, um, yeah, some 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 conditions where we say um, we've converged. So the the differences between one iteration iteration over the whole um, list and the next one, the difference between those two iterations will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and we can say okay small enough, we assume this to be converged, print us the final solution. And that's what we want to do. We want to use a um, function system for this. So, uh, and we have another uh, boundary condition. So the boundary condition, let me talk about that first. So we have our grid, um, as always, from x ranging from 0 to 2, and y ranging from 0 to 1. And we have boundary conditions, so we say p to be 0 at x equals 0, and p to be y at x equals 2. What is y? So it's just um, incre incrementing um, value of the coordinates. So let me just f draw on that. So we have x equals 0, which is right about here. There we want p to be zero as well. So this thick red line is um, the boundary condition on this side. On the other side, we say that at x equals two, um, for all y's, the boundary uh, p shall be equal to y. So just imagine y is increasing over here. Y is one here, uh, one here, zero point one, zero point two, and that's those are the values, which is just a linear. Um, function over here. And we on also want to have um, two other boundary conditions defined over here. And those are that we want uh, the, uh, the first order derivative in space with respect to y at y equals 0 or 1 um, is 0. So we on, on this wall and on this wall, we, want, we don't want to have the, we want the slope to be 0. And how do we do that? So if we looking from top down on the system, so we have 
uh, the grid and we set all those red points to the same. So like here, the edge point and the point farther into the grid are the same and this ensures that our change over y is equal, uh, is, uh, equal to zero. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, we have lots of analytical solutions for this and let's just jump into the code. So we have several functions here. Um, we define a, functions, a function named plot2d, which takes as input arguments x, y, and p. p is the, the list, a two-dimensional array, which uh, has to be plotted as a surface. x and y are the directions um, where we want to plot it. So those have to have the, the same mm, dimensions. That's very important because it would draw an error there if this wouldn't be the case. And now we have a function called Laplace2D, which takes p, which is at first our initial values, y, dx, dy, and uh, l1 norm target. So this l norm one target, l1 norm target, is um, the amount we tolerate the iteration plus one to be different from the iteration, from the current iteration, when we take a stop and say, okay, we, we, well, we assume this to be converged. So this is a small value. All right, um, so we initialize the L1 norm over here, and we have an empty PN for the next iteration. We do our calculation. Um, maybe I just point that out. We solve for P, N, I, J. And this ties with a central difference method, as said, because we have a diffusion term, not a wave propagating term. So we have the discretizing scheme um, suitable to the physics we want to simulate. And we solve that, we set a boundary condition as we did in all the steps earlier. And here is our L1 norm calculation. So it's the sum of the difference of the current um, iteration and the iteration um, one step earlier. All right, and then finally we return p, um, but just only if the L1 norm calculated is um, smaller than the L1 norm target, because then this loop gets um, finished and the p, p is returned. So the real calculation or the real problem begins here. We have our variable decla declaration. We have on the initial conditions, we are plotting. Um, uh, no, those are just the dimensions, and we have our boundary conditions, and here we calling the function of uh, plot2d with the initial conditions, then we call our function with Laplace2d, and say that L1 norm target is 1 to the power of minus 4, then we plot again, and we show all the plots. So let's just quickly do that. All right, there was some mistake. And now we can see we have the initial conditions like here. So just remember the, the boundary conditions. I oh, that's a little bit small. Boundary conditions I talked about earlier, which are here and and over the wall. Here we want to have uh, zero first order derivative, which is ensured here, but it's also ensured here with the converged state. So we have, um, yeah, this is the final solution. We, we could change, for example, um, the value for the L1 norm target. Let's say we make that to 10, which is farther, uh, no, 10 is much too, too big. Let's say it's 1e to the power of minus one, which is, which is rather big. Then it looks a bit like this, okay, and let's just decrease it down, which me, which is equal to doing more iterations. You could say, see that uh, the shape is becoming more and more to the shape uh, I showed you earlier with the minus four, which is somewhere over here. And now let's take it to the limit, minus 10 for example, and you see the changes are very small. 
So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have comments or questions, please leave them down below to uh, this video. And thanks again. Goodbye.